So next up uh, is Vikas Ahuja, who's presenting on innovations in packaging. Vikas has had a career in finance, policy, marketing, consulting, major projects, technology and strategy, all to do with sustainability. He recently moved to Tetra Pak to build recycling plants and is working on new commercial models to improve recycling in Japan and Korea and on reuse in Europe. Please welcome Vikas. Um, this is the follow-up of Steve's quiz. So there's uh, bonus cups of tea in Lamingtons for people who get the answers right to this one. Um, I'm just going to pick out a, a, a couple of numbers out of here to talk to. You've heard some of these before, and I think they tell an amazing story. And in this story, I'm also going to try and connect some of what you've heard about food waste and loss and some of what Nerid has just talked about packaging, right? So one out of 10, any clues on that one? One out of 10 is the number of people who went to bed hungry last night. 821 million people are chronically undernourished in the world. One third of food is wasted, right? This is food that's produced but never makes it anywhere to be of use. So I just want to call these out because they're, they're a big part of what happens in a food system. Um, Nerd is talking about packaging. What people on the inside of packaging world will tell you is these numbers tie together. It's really difficult to get fragile, fresh food safely to people who need it. And packaging plays an extraordinary role in making that happen. Um, both sides of my family come from the border of Afghanistan. Um, my father's side of the family were subsistence farmers. Um, I'm smug enough to say I'm likely to live 10 years longer than my grandfather. I'm a foot taller than him. Um, I've probably got 10 points higher IQ because of refrigeration and packaging. I've had better food for all of my life than, than he had for all of his. Um, sorry, that's the number call out. That's Ruben. Um, Ruben's the guy who was trying to work out how to package fresh milk in a way that it could be done without having to break a continuous tube of material. And the story goes he went home and he was telling his wife about it. She didn't look up from her knitting and said, you know, do it like you make sausages. And that's how Tetra Pak was invented, believe it or not. Um, but Ruben said, um, one of the things he said was, we, we commit to making food safe and available everywhere. And this is still the core of what we do at Tetra Pak. It's really about making, it's, this is about social sustainability, right? It's about understanding that food availability isn't uniform. It's very easy for us here with all of the, the quality of food and beverages we have for us to overlook this. And it's really important to understand that the social purpose of food is much greater. Um, Ruben also said this, and I don't know whether this was, he had marketing and comm support, but this is a line that keeps coming back in our business. A package should save more than it costs. And, and of course, if you know, I could meet him, I'd ask him whether he just had the commercials, the economics of packaging in mind. But of course, for us these days, there is a huge implication of this to social and environmental costs, right? A package should save more than it costs. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the impacts of packaging and then some of what we're doing locally and some of what's happening in WA and what I'd love to see happen in WA. Um, before I go there, and I'm not sure why the 200's lost the zero, just a few other numbers. 200 billion cartons sold worldwide that food's packaged in. Part of what we drive as a social sustainability push is school milk programs. So it's milk provided to school kids across the world, 66 million kids, 44 countries. And we're also party to dairy hubs. So this is where small farmers who don't have a show of having milking sheds or storage tanks uh, bring their milk to dairy hubs and that milk's collected and processed and sold on their behalf. So we're party to these programs. Um, in terms of where packaging is going, this is, this is our ambition. Our ambition is to deliver the world's most sustainable food package. What does that mean? It's responsibly sourced comes from forests that are sustainably managed. It's renewable, and I'll talk about why renewable is important in a second. 
or recycled materials. It's fully recyclable and carbon neutral. Um, and for us, this is, you know, we've got this goal out there. I'll talk a little bit about how we're working on each of these things to, to have got there and what's in the market already. So here's some examples of, of how far we've got. Um, we've got fully renewable packs, and I'm going to show you a local example of that. Fiber barrier. So this is a pack where we're trying to reduce other materials used in our packs to provide the barrier function to keep food safe. We're working towards a fiber only barrier or a paper only pack. Recycled polymers. So those packs there are made from recycled polymer content, which is now available. And then tethered caps in the next product over. And that's actually 100% recyclable, recycled content as well. Paper straws, of course, is a big part. So these are, you know, these are just some of the things that are already in the market. The fiber-based barrier, of course, is the, the sort of holy grail in my space at the moment, and we've got packs on trial and market trial for this. Here's a great local example. Jackie's going to talk a little bit about this. I'm, I hope I'm not stealing your thunder too much. <laughs> this is a, in, in that case, I'll just skip this slide. But, but this is an awesome example, right? Um, Browns have been around for longer than us. We've been in Australia for about 70 years. Uh, Browns have been doing this for much longer than we have. It's an awesome partnership to be partnered with the local family business over this period of time. And it drives a great result. Um, you know, Jackie turns the thumbnails on us when she was in the Browns role about making sure that the claim stacked up. So, you know, everything's measured to the microgram. Everything's certified. We understand it's all traceable. These are fully renewable packs. These packs are made from 100% renewable materials. Why is renewable important? I think Hamoun will talk about this later. Renewable is important because from a carbon perspective, it plays a big role in minimizing the carbon footprint. Why, why do I talk about carbon? Um, well, we should all be talking about carbon, right? Um, carbon's important. Carbon plays out really well in renewable packaging, paper packaging. We all understand intuitively that paper's a natural material. Um, you see this massive trend to what's been called paperization. Last time you went and bought clothing or shoes, you would have got them in a craft paper bag rather than a plastic bag, all likely. And it's because we get uh, that paper's a good material. Paper's a good material from because it's renewable, and because it's renewable, it has a really low carbon footprint. Um, so examples like this are awesome. Um, here's another example, another iconic Australian brand. I like this example for WA particularly. Um, so this is product that you, you would normally see in a steel can or in a glass jar. Um, it's mostly paper, renewable material. It's the most mass efficient form of rigid packaging. So we are a lower mass of packaging than any other comparable form of rigid packaging. And because you've got low mass, it means you've got all the impacts that come with the material are reduced because you're just using less of it. Um, and we've got this nerdy brick shape. And the benefit of the nerdy brick shape is when you put it in a box, you put the box on a pallet, you put the pallet in a truck or you, into a container, you're not transporting air, you're transporting the product, right? So in this state, where distances are you know, like nowhere else in the world, stuff's moved around this country. Um, I used to be head of sustainability at Coles, by the way, so you can ping me with questions about that later. We used to move stuff, of course, to Port Hedland, Kanara, Karatha, um, and uh, transport plays a big role you know, in, in what happens in the state. Um, so hats off to Rosella. Um, this is a retortable pack. Uh, new categories coming into the market. Um, I'm super keen to catch up with Kathy Oates. She said some really nuanced stuff about glass, which I was delighted to hear, and the issues with glass. Um, but what we're starting to see is great products, um, like cocktails, like wine, uh, turning up in carton. Um, here's some of what's happening with recycling plants. The single biggest thing we're doing at the moment is investing heavily in SaveBoard. Um, save board is a way to turn beverage cartons, which are derived from wood, should have been a timber product in the first place, served to roll as packaging, has gone back into a timber replacement product. We've got two plants operating, there's other plants coming, not just save board, but other uh, recycling facilities. That's Paul. I don't like Paul. I don't like Paul because I want to be Paul. Um, <laughs> he's running a super exciting business. 
Um, I love the business that he's doing. It's really simple. He's making a great product. There's an example of the end result. So that's a zero waste cafe in Manhattan, made fully out of the, fitted out in the interiors, fitted out with a safe wood product. Um, of course, we're trying to give them a great plug by getting them into the media wherever we can. Joanna Griggs was awesome, so was Karen Ledbury and Laura Wells, incredible people doing an amazing job uh, in this space. So it's really, really good to see Saveboard land in such credible hands and be talked about. Um, Nerida talked about this a little. Um, we're investing in artificial intelligence to sort rubbish. So don't be frightened, right? It's just sorting your rubbish. Yes, you'll get a bill for everything you put in your bin, but no, that's, that's a while off yet. But, but seriously, you know, AI is really good at doing this. We're investing in getting uh, cartons sorted out of MRFs so that we can recycle them. Uh, and and we're, we're happy to be doing this because we've got a great material that should be recycled. Um, some of what's happening in WA. So um, Nerida just talked about the relevance of container deposit. Absolutely support the expansion of container deposits, hugely important for a state like WA because of the geographical and population density challenges you have. Um, we're also working with Adash Fiber, who've got a stall outside or starting to or looking to explore how we can partner with them. Um, there's some great new projects coming up in WA. WA government's re-tendered a project to do with fiber recycling in WA, and of course we'd support that. 